Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth for another special edition of our sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. Our special new release this week is episode two of Jesse Gusman's sweet romance novella, Christmas Car Kerfuffle. Now, we're going to have a little live reading in just a bit, but first, I wanted to say Merry Christmas to you and yours. I hope you've all had a wonderful, wonderful holiday. It wasn't too bad here in the Dice household. We had a Christmas ham for dinner on Christmas, uh, uh, the pineapple brown sugar ham that I made for you guys a while back. The only catch this time was that I waited a little late to get the size of ham I wanted, and the smallest ham I could find was nine pounds. Well, that's not gigantic, but I only had three people for Christmas dinner, myself, my son, and my daughter-in-law. So that works out to about three pounds of ham each. Also, uh, just for future reference for anybody out there who's trying that recipe that I, that I gave you guys, a nine-pound ham, generally speaking, will not fit in a normal crock pot. Who knew? So, long story short, we've got plenty of ham at the Dice household. If you need any, stop on by. Or, Jesse and I actually had been talking about ways to use leftover ham, and she gave me a couple of great suggestions. But if you guys have any ideas or things you like to do with leftover ham, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Okay. Again, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Um, I got a few neat little things I thought I would share with you guys. First, this lovely uh, retro logo Alabama sweatshirt. Um, I also got. This, yes, oh yes, that's right. I now have a full book of these to share with you guys. So apologies in advance. You can take it up with my daughter-in-law if you have any problems. Um, she does make up for it, though, with the next little gift. Um, most of you have seen or heard me go on and on about my little minions uh, outside. And, and, and we've been having, you know, kind of a tough go here uh, in the North Georgia area. Uh, I know for, for many of you across the country and across the world, this is nothing. But uh, for us, when Southerners have three days of sub-freezing sub temperatures, we tend to kind of freak out uh, a lot. And it's finally getting a little warmer here. And thought I would share that uh, the little critters are back out in force today, and they seem to have weathered everything quite well. In fact, I did get to see the grand dame of all of them, Miss Speedy. I got to even give her a little head scritch. But back to, back to my other Christmas gift, my daughter-in-law thought it would be kind of cute if they had a special place to eat. So she got them or she got me a little picnic table for the squirrels and chipmunks to eat. Umbrella. Is that not adorable? Anyway. If I can get it set down here without... There. Obviously, uh, gifts are not the reason for the season because we've already been given the greatest gift there is. And I'm hoping that uh, the good Lord will bless you today and throughout the coming year. And um, so let's move on to a little bit of a sneak preview for episode two of Christmas Car Kerfuffle. Now, I'm going to, I'll give kind of a spoiler alert here for anybody who hasn't listened to episode one yet, and if you're interested in doing that, you might want to drop out here and, and go do that and not listen to the rest, because this is a little sample from episode two. 
it's not super spoilery, but just in case you want to have no spoilers at all, uh, you can do that. So I'll give you a second to just go ahead and go load up episode one. Okay. All right. So, uh, hopefully everybody that's left is, wants to hear a little sample of Christmas car kerfuffle and I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll come back this Friday for episode number two, right here on Say With Jay. Zayden could have kicked himself for his offer to take Blythe with him. Why in the world would she want to take a worthless trip to New York to fix the mix-up her mechanic-slash-brother-in-law had made? He loved spending time with Rand and Lottie, and loved that seeing his niece and nephew also meant he got to see Blythe but she obviously didn't have the same feelings for him that he had for her, and if he wanted to keep their relationship from being awkward, he needed to keep his mouth from running off when it should really stay shut. Like just now. Halfway through his formal dining room, he could see Grandpap and Graham on the couch together. They were situated in the middle of it, rather than on each end the way they were when he'd walked out. Their heads leaned together, and they seemed like they were in deep conversation about something. He glanced at Blythe and nodded to the old couple. She grinned and gave him a cheesy thumbs up. He stumbled, the ache in his chest sharper than it had ever been before. Her beautiful smile pulling his own lips up, even while his heart hurt. Jerking his gaze away, he cleared his throat. <clears> throat> hey, I'm ready. He came around the front of the couch and hunched down in front of Graham. I was wondering if you wanted to go with Grandpap and I. Funny you should mention that, son. She slanted a look at Grandpap out of the corner of her glasses. I was just thinking that I'd love to go, but I wanted to spend some time with Blythe, too. So... She turned and watched as Blythe walked around and stood beside Zayden. I figured I'd ask Blythe if she wanted to ride along to New York and back. The four of us could go together, Grandpap added, just in case Zayden didn't get it the first time, apparently. The sly looks the older couple were sending to each other raised his radar, but he couldn't figure out their code speak. He looked at Blythe. I already asked her if she wanted to come, but I think she forgot to answer. He wanted to give her an out in case she really didn't want to. This is a busy time of year. She probably has a ton of things to do. She was going to wrap gifts tonight with me, Graham insisted. That's impossible, so that means she's free. Satan stood. He was about to open his mouth to help Blythe back out gracefully when her next sentence shot that idea to pieces. I'd actually love to go. What a great idea. A Christmas road trip with grandparents. Everything happens for a reason. Even this Christmas car kerfuffle. Pap used his cane and eased himself up. I need to stop at the little boy's room, then I'll be ready. Show me where it is, because I need to use it too. Graham said as Blythe helped her to her feet. They toddled off together to the hall bathroom. Do you mind still stopping at my house? I'd like to change into something more suited to a road trip than this. Blythe indicated her outfit, a business skirt, suit, and heels. And I'd like to grab something to munch on. Of course I'll stop, and don't worry about food. We'll stop somewhere and grab a bite. Zayden could hardly believe he was going to get to spend the next eight hours with Blythe. He just had to maneuver the seating arrangements. He checked the doorway where the older couple had disappeared. You think we can manage to get them in the back seat together? She grinned. You handle Grandpap, and I'll get Graham. We just won't give them a choice. Turned out it was needless worrying since both Graham and Grandpap expressed a desire to ride in the back seat, which was a little odd, 
because Zayden had never heard Grandpap say that he got a little dizzy riding in the front. And when Graham had claimed that the front seat made her hip replacement hurt, Bly's face had registered surprise like she hadn't known. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.